What's going on everyone, Alex here. So I know it's been a while, but today I wanna to have a look at my brand new microphone, the Rode PodMic USB. So as you can tell from the picture, I will be using the audio from the PodMic for this whole video. I have turned on all the processing in the Rode Connect app, but I'll get more into that later. So full disclosure, I'm a bit of a noob when it comes to microphones and all the terminology that comes with it. So this video is gonna be pretty basic, just a quick unboxing, first look and setup of the Rode PodMic USB. Okay, so a little bit of background about the Rode PodMic. Originally it came out in 2018 and it was very popular because it was only $99, but it was XLR only, meaning you needed some sort of audio interface to connect to your computer. I personally didn't have an audio interface, which is why I never got it. Although I really like the look of the original PodMic. Fast forward to today, we have the PodMic USB, which is almost identical to the original one, except for two things. One being the color, obviously this one is all black and the original one was silver and black. I think they both look great. Probably think this one looks a little bit better, but both are really good microphones and in my opinion, probably the best looking microphones out there. And then two, obviously as it's in the name, it has USB-C connectivity. So you can just connect this directly to a computer or a smartphone and you're good to go and you can start recording audio. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the unboxing of the Broad PodMic USB. First thing you'll notice is you get this really nice pop filter. So the cool thing about this pop filter is it kind of matches the design of the pod mic, which is one of its selling points. And two, I don't think you can buy this separately. So if you want to have this pop filter, you have to actually buy the pod mic USB. I'm sure that'll change in the future, but really cool that it comes with it. And it just helps to reduce plosive sounds and makes the mic sound a little bit better. Ideally, you wouldn't have to use it. I'd like to have the mic looking like it does without the pop filter, but if it makes the sound a bit better, then it's a sacrifice I'm willing to take. Next, we have the USB-C cable. It's a really nice USB-C cable, not too much to say about it, but it seems really durable and it's three meters in length, so it'll work with most setups. Then lastly, we obviously have the mic itself, and I've obviously read online that it's quite a heavy microphone, but I was quite surprised when I actually picked it up myself. It's very beefy. I weighed it and mine weighs 871 grams. Then with the pop filter on, it weighs just over 900 grams. So you do need to keep that in mind when you're picking what kind of stand you want. Obviously, if you have a tabletop stand, you should be fine, but different mic arms mightn't be able to hold the weight. I'm personally using the Elgato low profile arm and you really have to uh, crank each kind of part of the arm to make sure that it stays in place. But once you do that, it's fine, but just something to note. Which leads me to the last thing of the unboxing and something that's missing. You'll notice there's no stand. You'll have to get that separately, whether it's a tabletop stand or a boom arm, it's up to you, but you need to get that separately. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the microphone and I'm not gonna lie, one of the main reasons why I went for this mic is because of how it looks. I just think it looks really cool and I like to have stuff that looks cool. So the pod mic is made entirely out of metal, which makes it feel really premium and you have very minimal branding on either side, just with the Rode logo. As you can see, it comes with this really nice metal yoke, similar to or identical to the original pod mic. And what's great about this is in the yoke, it has a 3 8 and a 5 8 mount. So for most boom arms, you won't have to kind of mess around with different adapters, except for the boom arm that I went for. Obviously, for some reason, the Elgato decided to do something different, but the Elgato low profile arm does come with 3 8 and 5 8 adapters. So it's not too big a deal, but for the majority of boom arms, you should be okay. Then looking at the back of the mic, you have the, obviously the XLR input and the USB input. One cool thing about the XLR input is it comes with this little XLR cover to protect it while you're not using it. That's great for me because I plan on using USB for the foreseeable future and I can just keep that cover in to keep the XLR input safe. Then you also have an audio in jack which allows you just to monitor your audio in real time with no latency. I don't really like that, it sounds kind of weird. I'm not used to it yet, but it's cool that it's there. And then you have a volume dial which also doles up as a mute button. And lastly, you have an LED indicator to show you if the mic is active or not. One thing I find a bit strange is why the volume dial and the LED are on the back, because if you're talking into it like I am now and you kind of have to feel around with it, you know, you can kind of disturb the mic by having to feel around for that volume dial. And then obviously if you want to press it, you can't see the LED because it's on the back. So it's a bit strange. The LED is kind of pointless because I don't know whether it's muted or not. Obviously I can look at my screen and see the Rode Connect app to show me that it's muted, but the LED is kind of pointless on the back. Okay, so a quick talk about the specs. And again, like I said earlier, I'm not an uh, audiophile. I don't really know what I'm talking about when it comes to microphones, but this is what's called a dynamic microphone. And there are two versions of mics. 
Dynamic and Condenser. Could be more, but they're the kind of two main ones. And I'm going to leave a link down in the description to a good video that actually explains the difference because I don't really know. But from what I can tell, a condenser mic is a lot more sensitive, which is why you see them in shock mounts a lot. And they're really good for like a, a professional setup with like treated, that's treated for sound. Whereas a dynamic mic can be a bit more kind of robust. That's why gamers use them and stuff like that and in the radio. So for me, I think it suits me better because this room isn't treated and they just seem to be a bit more robust to use and they look better in my opinion. Okay, so now we're going to jump into the laptop and show you the Rode Connect software, which works really well with the pod mic. It's a free software you can download and basically it's like an audio interface on your laptop. Okay, so now I'm on my laptop here and as you can see, we have the Rode Connect app set up. So just a quick overview of the app from what I can tell. This is the line for the pod mic. As you can see, this green line is my sound waves and this can adjust the volume of the mic. Um, I have it set there just so the sound is in between this line here. I'm guessing that's how it's supposed to work. Then you have system audio, which is basically if you're playing YouTube videos or music or anything like that, you can control the volume through this. And then virtual is you can connect to um, Zoom or something like that and control the mic in here. Again, I'm not too sure how that all works, but that's what that is. And then you just have sounds here that you can adjust the volume for and there's different types. So then you can see at the top here, I'm recording this audio and what's really cool is it saves in this app and then you can export it to whatever kind of um, hard drive or to the laptop, wherever you want. It's kind of cool that you can do it all in, in the app. And then now let's look at kind of the processing. So if you click on the pod mic, this all pops up. So I've just adjusted the gain here again. You want it in between the green lines. So I've put it up to 60. I think it comes as 52. Um, so I just needed to bump it up a bit. And then you have uh, normal processing or advanced processing. So I obviously have advanced processing on here and noise gate. Basically what I've understood this to be is get rid of kind of background noise. So if you're in a room where there's like, like just background noise, um, this is really good to get rid of that. Then you have a compressor, which basically tries to keep the highs not too high and the lows not too low, basically. It tries to keep it on an even playing field. And then an exciter is basically to make the mic sound a bit more punchy and give it a bit more life to it anyway. I'm, I'm sure there's better ways of explaining it, but that's my understanding. And then high pass filter, I just, I don't know what that means. I'm not going to lie. And then if I just go turn off advanced processing, it goes to this just regular processing. This is Rode's kind of uh, simple version of processing. You have depth. This is the full depth. And then this is no depth. So I'm not sure if you hear a difference, but I'm just going to leave it on three quarters. Then you have sparkle. Not sure what sparkle means, but full sparkle. And then we have low sparkle. So I don't know if you can tell a difference at full sparkle and no sparkle, but again, I'm just going to leave it at three quarters. And then lastly, we have punch. This is on full punch and then this is on no punch. So I'm not sure if there's a difference, but again, leave it on three quarters. And that's the basic processing on the Rode Connect app. I'm going to go again with the full advanced processing and leave it all on. And hopefully that sounds good. And yeah, that's the Rode Connect app. And once I'm finished recording, I'll stop recording up here. It'll save in the library and I'll be able to use it however I want. So really cool thing and just gives you a lot of functionality for the microphone. Okay, so that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, just a quick unboxing and first look at the Rode Pod mic. I may revisit it in a couple of months and give kind of a proper full review. As I said, I'm very new to microphones and all the different terminology, but that's my first impressions. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.